This is Gwithlin Samuel Newton Ford, better known to the world as the actor Glenn Ford. Glenn was born the 1st of May, 1916 in Quebec, Canada. He became a naturalized U.S. citizen in 1939. Glenn's dad was Newton Ford. He worked for the Canadian Railroad System, and his mother Hannah was a doting mother to Glenn, and later would become a typical stage mother. It's been said that the most influential woman in Glenn Ford's life was his mother Hannah. When Glenn was seven years old, they moved from Canada to California. Now this is a picture in 1922 of Glenn holding a puppy in Venice. Two years later in 1924, they moved to Santa Monica. Glenn attended Santa Monica High School. There he participated in school plays and found that he loved acting. After graduating in 1934, he continued acting with small groups for another five years. In the meantime, he worked construction jobs, learning electrical and carpentry skills that he used around the house years later, even after he had become a star. Finally, Glenn was spotted by a talent scout and signed with Columbia Pictures that was run by Harry Cohn. He stayed loyal to Harry Cohn and Columbia Pictures as a contract player until 1955. In 1939, Glenn performed in his debut starring role in Heaven with a Bob Wire Fence along with Gene Rogers. Although Ford was making some money and signing autographs for adoring young women, he was still living with and taking care of his mother. By this time, he had already changed his name to Glenn Ford after his dad's hometown in Canada. A few months before World War II started, Ford actually had joined the Coast Guard Auxiliary. During the war, he joined the Marines. Eventually, years later, he ended up a lieutenant commander and public affairs officer in the Naval Reserve. During their party supporting a bond drive in 1943 during the war, Glenn's introduced by his friend Pat O'Brien to Eleanor Powell. At the time, Eleanor Powell was a world-famous star. She was not only more famous than Glenn, but she was making a lot more money. They quickly became a couple. On the 23rd of October, 1943, while Glenn was still in the Marines, Glenn and Eleanor Powell married. At the time, she was living at home with her mother, and he was living with his. But not long afterwards, they moved into this 22-room mansion at 1036 Cove Way in Beverly Hills. At the age of 33 and at the top of her profession, Eleanor gave it all up to become a housewife and mother, upsetting her studio and many of her fans. Two years later, on February the 5th, 1945, their only son, Peter, was born. One year after Peter's birth, Glenn Ford becomes a Hollywood star. That movie that did it for him was Gilda, co-starring Hollywood pinup girl, Rita Hayward. Glenn and Rita would later form a relationship that would last for 40 years. After Gilda, Glenn's stardom was steadily rising, and in 1954, he starred in Blackboard Jungle with Sidney Poitier and Vic Morrill for MGM. In 1956, he starred with Marlon Brando in Tea House of the August Moon. Also in 1956, Ford made a western called Jubal with Ernest Borgnine. A year later, in 1957, he played a villain in 310 to Yuma. In 1958, Glenn Ford was the top box office star in Hollywood. 
and the money was pouring in. That same year, he made one of his best westerns, Cowboy, with Jack Lemmon. The next year in 1959, after 16 years of marriage, Eleanor Powell files for divorce. Their only child, Peter, was 14 at the time. His parents' relationship had been strained for years. She devoted her attention to Peter and less to her husband. And he devoted much of his attention to other women and caused her to feel left out. With Eleanor living on the top floor of the mansion and Glenn on the bottom floor and little Peter and his grandmother Hannah in the middle floor, with everyone living separate lives, it naturally caused tension throughout the family. Although Glenn Ford was not considered a nurturing father, it is funny to me that the two, father and son, worked together through the years even to Peter having a part on Cades County, a TV series that Glenn started in the 70s. For a movie star, this shows love, a way of keeping someone close to him without having to admit it. After the divorce from Glenn, Eleanor Powell never remarried and never again had a serious romantic relationship. She continued doing charity work and her greatest love was her son, Peter. On the 11th of February, 1982, movie star and mother, Eleanor Powell, died of uterine cancer after a long, hard battle. Her ashes was placed in a bronze box at the Hollywood Forever Cemetery in Hollywood. Eleanor Powell, according to Fred Astaire, said that she was the best dancer ever in Hollywood, including him. Eleanor Powell Ford was 69 years old. After Glenn and Eleanor's divorce, he renewed his romance with Rita Hayward, even buying a building site from her so that he could build his new home next to her located at 911 Oxford Way in Beverly Hills. Although Rita was married at the time, she soon divorced. Glenn, they say, cut a door in his back fence so that Rita could come over without being seen. Although they each married different people through the years, they always remained close. And on the 14th of May, 1987, Rita Hayward died from complications of Alzheimer's. She died 19 years before Glenn. She rests at the Hollywood Cross Cemetery in Culver City, California. Rita Hayward was 68 years old, and Glenn Ford was her pallbearer. Seven years after divorcing Eleanor Powell, Ford married actress Catherine Hayes in March of 1966. Now you may recall her from a long time running soap opera by the name of As the World Turns. She played Kim Hughes. Glenn Ford and Catherine Hayes were divorced in June of 1969. In 1977, Ford married Cynthia Hayward, a model. It was her second marriage, and she was 30, and Glenn was 62. The two were divorced in 1984. Of all of his ex-wives, he said that Cynthia was the only one that he remained in good terms with. This is Stephanie Powers on the left, with Glenn's closest friend, William Holden and Glenn and Cynthia. Glenn became involved with Pauline Kernan. She served as his nurse for the next seven years. According to Peter Ford, Glenn's son, his dad was very trusting when it came to young, beautiful women. He gave Pauline, his nurse, a will leaving everyone out but her. Peter tells in his book that's called 
Glenn Ford a life, how he had to go to court to fight to protect his dad's interest, even to keeping his nurses from placing a no resuscitation order on his hospital door against his dad's will. Peter tells of Glenn's love for Hope Lang and many others. Glenn's last marriage was to Jeannie Bios, 5 March 1993. Glenn was 76 years old at the time of the marriage and she was 40 years younger than him. They divorced within a year. In 1994, Glenn asked his son and family to move in to help take care of him, which they did. He had suffered a series of strokes and was confined mostly to his bed and wheelchair. His mental and physical health have been declining for years. In his book, Peter Ford said that he believed his dad started drinking after his divorce from his mother, and through the years he had grown worse. On August the 30th, 2006, around 4 p.m. in the afternoon, paramedics were called to Glenn Ford's home in Beverly Hills. The veteran actor was dead. He was interred at the Woodland Memorial Cemetery in Santa Monica, California. He asked to be buried with his, the ashes of his beautiful and beloved dog, Bismarck. Glenn Ford was 90 years old.